AP Biology, Chapter 36, Plant Transport, Part 2. Extent of xylem sap. Now remember, xylem pulls up water and minerals from the roots to the leaves. And we've talked about how we get the water uh, through the apoplast and symplast route uh, in the roots, and then it has to pass the cusparian strip, and then it enters the xylem. In the xylem, we have adhesion and cohesion until it gets up to the leaves. Now, here is a vascular bundle of leaf. This is a vein. And in that vein, we have two things. We have xylem, located here on the top, and phloem on the bottom. We're not going to talk about phloem right now, but with the xylem, the water adhesion to the sides of the walls of the cell walls of the plant, and then um, cohesion between water molecules prevents the water from falling back down to the roots. Once that water gets to the, the leaf, however, it doesn't stay in the xylem anymore. The water potential is much lower in the mesophyll, the spongy mesophyll, airspace within the leaf. So the water moves from higher water potential inside the vein, in the xylem, to lower water potential in the leaf airspace. And you should know that, high to low. And that's the reason why the water is moving. The water potential is even lower outside the leaf. So now the water is going to move from the leaf mesophyll layer. Remember, mesophyll is uh, the place where plants are doing their photosynthesis to the lower water potential outside the leaf. So high water potential to low water potential. High to low. We're just talking about um, basically osmosis of water. The other thing you should know is that the bigger the difference in water potential between the xylem and um, outside the uh, uh, xylem in the airspace within the mesophyll, there's going to be faster transpiration or faster evaporation of water. So if this space inside is kind of moist and the xylem is already kind of uh, wet, there's not very fast water movement from high to low because there's not much difference in water potential. However, if it's very dry out, that's going to make the leaf very dry and that's going to allow more water to evaporate quicker, which will result in more lo water loss by the plant. So remember, water potential from high to low, that's how the xylem uh, water leaves and enters the spongy mesophyll. Then water high to low leaves the through the stomates in the bottom. And if there is a lower water potential in the mesophyll, in the airspace, there is faster evaporation. Just think if it's uh, wet outside versus dry outside, when do you um, evaporate water on your body faster? Of course, during dry times. All right, so we have uh, rise of water in a tree by, tree by bulk flow. Again, bulk flow means lots of stuff being moved at one time. Here we have... Um, root pressure push, and we do need to write this down. The root pressure push is just that water pressure uh, caused by going from hypotonic to hypertonic within the root hairs. And this is not the major reason why water uh, moves up a plant, but it is one reason, and you should be aware of that. Water potential, again, is higher in the soil and lower in the leaves, so you have this constant flow from high to low all the way up to the leaves and eventually out through the uh, leaves into the atmosphere. And then within the xylem, we have adhesion and cohesion to the xylem. And this is a review of second quarter. Here we have water-to-water -water cohesion that prevents the water from falling back down. And then we have water-to-xylem adhesion. And that's going to keep on pulling that water molecule up and up and up, just like water creeping up a paper towel until it reaches the leaf. And then at the leaf, we have the water moving from high to low, evaporating into the spongy mesophyll space and then eventually evaporating out into the uh, atmosphere. Again, going from higher water potential to lower water potential. Pause at this point and copy down this um, information. All right, control of transpiration. Remember that stomates uh, open and close depending on the weather conditions. And if the weather is uh, really dry outside, the stomates close to prevent water loss. However, we can't do that for too long. We're going to enter photorespiration and we can't make any more sugars if carbon dioxide can't get in. So there's a balance between opening your stomates and closing your stomates if you're a plant, closing to prevent water loss, open to make sure you get carbon dioxide. So it's, a, it's kind of a give and take here. A leaf may transpire more than its weight in water a day, especially things like corn uh, can transpire a ton of water, 125 liters in a growing season, which is far more than the mass of the plant. All right, so let's talk about how the stomates work, and you do need to know this, so let's go through this step by step. All right, here we have the guard cells. These guard cells are what the um, stomate is surrounded by, and they'll either open or close depending on the weather conditions. So how do we open the stomate? 
to open a stomate, we end up having the uh, potassium pumped into the guard cell. So the first step, pumping of potassium into the guard cell. This is going to be a co-transport mechanism. So what ends up happening is protons are pumped out. Potassium with the protons flow back in, creating a very hypertonic solution inside these guard cells. If the guard cell is hypertonic, the water moves in by osmosis and fills the cell. Once the cell is filled, it opens up. It actually has like a, a curve to it. And as it fills up with more water, it curves, 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 and we have an open stomate. This is in times when there's plenty of water, when it's not very dry out. So how do we close the stomates? Well, same kind of mechanism. We have potassium ions being pumped out. Now we have a hypertonic solution on the outside, and then the water leaves by osmosis. Once the water uh, leaves by osmosis, the guard cells become flaccid and they close up. So let's review. Protons pumped out, potassium and protons flow back in, active transport mechanism, creates a hypertonic solution on the inside of the cell, the guard cell. Water flows in by osmosis, opens up the guard cell, opens up the stomate. When the weather conditions are bad outside, dry outside, the potassium is pumped out using the co-transport mechanism with the uh, proton pump, and then you have a hypertonic solution on the outside of the guard cell. Water flows out by osmosis, closes up the guard cells. Here we have some other uh, ways stomates open. Let's go ahead and write this down. If there is blue um, light in the uh, white light outside, that is going to trigger the opening of stomates kind of an adaptation for opening up carbon dioxide channels when you can do photosynthesis. Also when CO2 levels uh, go down, that will trigger the stomates to open. And there's also something called a circadian rhythm or 24 hour clock that will open up the stomates as well. So let's go and copy this information down. Here we have our uh, proton pump, protons pumped out, and then potassiums with the protons flow back into the cytoplasm. That's to help you remember what the uh, previous slide, how the, the guard cells work. If you have questions about how the uh, proton pump works, make sure you ask in class. All right, here we have the loading of sugars into phloem, and this is active transport using co-transport and proton pumps. So let's go ahead and write this down. So we made some sugars in the leaves. That's wonderful. Now we got to pump them into the phloem, push them down into the roots. How are we going to do that? Well, we have ATP. This is active transport, so it requires an ATP. Hydrogen ions are pumped out of the uh, phloem cells and then pumped into the cells that are going to have the sugars. Once those hydrogen ions are pumped out of the uh, phloem, then they diffuse back into the phloem with the sucrose in a co-transport mechanism. And this is how we pump sugars into the phloem. This required ATP to pump out the protons, so this is considered active transport, even though we're diffusing the sugar in with the uh, chemiosmotic process of hydrogen ion flow um, in the second part. All right, so we have something called source to sink. If we make our sugars in the leaves, they are considered a source, and you do need to know that. The sugars are pumped by active transport using a co-transport mechanism, protons pumped out, sugar with the protons flow back in, and now we have a whole bunch of sugars inside the uh, phloem. Now this makes the phloem very hypertonic or very high in solutes, so water flows in by osmosis, going from where it's more pure to less pure. So now we have a push, positive pressure, pushing the sugars all the way down to the roots. Then at the roots, they're stored as either sucrose or chained together to make starch. Now, you should know that during the uh, springtime, we have uh, the opposite happening. Since we don't have leaves in the springtime, you know, the leaves still need to be made, we have the sugar stored in the roots during the winter uh, for something like a tree, and then the sugar goes the opposite direction. So the exception to the source to sink flow from leaves down to roots by positive pressure would be in the springtime for plants. When there are no leaves, we need energy at the branches to make our new leaves, so we pump out sugars into the phloem, and then it goes the opposite direction back up to the branches, and then that sugar is used to make more leaves. So once again, it's a source to make the sugars, and that's in the summer. 
landfall. The source for sugars is the springtime when there are no leaves and we have to break down the uh, starch into sugars and transport them back up. The sink is wherever the sugars are going and most of the time they're going to the roots except during the springtime for trees. And we can do experiments with this. We uh, actually have uh, cut off the heads of aphids after they bite into the phloem and measure the rate at which they uh, have the, the sugar leave their heads as an experiment. And this shows positive pressure, a push from the, uh, the leaves, not negative pressure. And that's how basically maple sugaring works. We just let the positive pressure from leaves push the maple syrup, the phloem sugar, into the buckets, and we use it for our pancakes. That ends part two of chapter 36 notes.